So uh, banks are pretty much the only topic on deck for today, but there's a slew of news, ladies and gentlemen. As the banks basically reported today, you got Citi, Morgan Stanley, Wells Fargo already reported, JP Morgan, Bank of America. And the thing is with Bank of America, right? With the expectations being so skewed to the downside, right? We were talking about this on the Weekend Deep Dive link in the description below if you guys missed that one. But these expectations are a catastrophe for the bears. Considering that all you have to do is report one sliver of good news and the market is going to basically explode. That Bank of America, with a sympathy play, rallied a whopping 5% and then managed to hold it on Monday going into their earnings. And the natural question is, you guys would have already seen the report what happened. Did Bank of America basically blow their earnings out? And if so, how could we profit off of it? Well, I did actually do a trade on Bank of America America, uh, buying a call on it right at $43. So I don't have to make a lot of money on it. However, I was a little bit interested and skeptical that these bank earnings were going to come in bad, right? When we're looking at Bank of America and 11 to 0, this leaves very, very little margin for any form of error. And I'm going to explain to you guys in today's video why I saw this opportunity and how you guys can pick it up yourselves. We'll also give you an update of the opportunities in the market. So make sure you guys stay to the five minute mark so that I'm gonna be going over those options in that section of the video. But first of all, with Bank of America being zero and 11, I'm like there, I may be wrong, right? You guys will know when the time of this video coming out, but I got this position on here. I could roll it if I wanted to, but I'm looking at Bank of America and I'm basically saying, okay, what is the probability that everyone's gonna all of a sudden turn bearish on the stock considering that the market is extremely greedy? Yes, this can turn on a dime. We've seen this can turn on a dime, but we've also seen crazy things happen when we get into extreme uh, greed territory where we just continue to rally, rally, rally. And speaking of the rally man himself, Tom Lee says a new all-time highs for stock market part of the formula predicts bull market extending into 2025. This is also the guy that predicted a 40% rally in the Russell. We haven't necessarily got that yet, but I use that word cautiously considering the Russell is basically looking like it wants to base out right here and then explode, right? It still has a large percentage to run, but then again, the question is, how are Fed rate cuts going to be interpreted by the market? Is earnings going to kick off something massive? And remember, we got Netflix earnings coming up as well, and they're expected to be 29 to 2. They're setting up expectations to be below out earnings. And if the banks come in anywhere remotely warmer than a cold corpse, then they're going to rally, right? We can actually go to City, right? City was the other one that everyone was saying, hey, this is going to be bearish or looking like it's bearish. But again, I say when I have one to 12, you have to come, you, you, any sort of warm expectations is going to result in a bullish reaction in it. And that is why I'm playing bullish. I'm playing the contrarian because apparently being bullish contrarian in this market is the highest profitability possible, right? As we go into this crazy earnings season, which we got Netflix on Thursday, we're going to be streaming that. And we're also going to be streaming the bank earnings tonight, UNH as well. So, you know, my partner loves his UNH. So make sure you guys drop by the stream today, 7 p.m. Eastern. So make sure you guys check that out. And also what remains extremely, extremely strong is the Fed expectations for a cut of 25 basis points in November. There's no data swaying it. There's not really any economical data that's coming out this week that's going to basically skew the markets in any way, shape or form, right? If we just go to this week, we got Empire State Manufacturing that comes out today at 830. It would already been out. You already seen the reactions to the markets, but I think bank earnings are going to steal the show. Subsequently on Wednesday, there's not much. We got some job numbers and retail sales on Thursday. But remember, that's Netflix earnings day or post market. So everyone's going to be focused on Netflix. Everyone's going to be thinking that bullish mentality, especially if we're still in extreme greed going into bank earnings, right? Or sorry, Netflix earnings. And then subsequently Friday, we got some housing data. We'll keep you guys updated of the housing data as promised. As always, I will let you know if there's any signs of housing crash, but as far as we can see now, it's just standard seasonality. There is no true evidence of housing degradation in the broader markets. And subsequently, 
the markets basically said time to rally, right? I said on the weekend deep dive, again, link in description below. If you guys wanna check that out, ex explaining how we got these levels, what they are, how they are, how to play them. I went over that and I'll go over and how to play that in just a moment here of what options I'm gonna be looking at to play on the market and the strategy to make the most amount of money for this with the the market basically gave you a freebie now. You can open your account today and basically just play these options and know if you're gonna be bullish or bearish, right? The continuation of the bank earnings, if that continues, that's green light number one to be going. Now, if bank earnings come in horrible, then we wait to Netflix, right? We wait to see how the market reacts. But subsequently, the 580 break is a strong break for the S&P and also the NASDAQ. I said NASDAQ was gonna give you direction in the markets this week because you have to get, we were kind of holding at that 494 or 47 number and we just gap and go. We did not fill the gap. We did not fill the gap on the S&P either. So we leave a gap. Now, subsequently, if we leave a gap over the next two days, that is when things get really, really excited. Because in the subsequent two days, that means that we're gonna get rally paradigm, right? Could we get to 600 by end of year on the SPY? That is the natural question that we're gonna be trying to answer. And let's dive into some of the option chains that we can play along with basically the strategy that we need to employ for that. But the first thing we need to pay attention to is the VIX. The VIX is gonna tell you where you need to be buy side or sell side of the market. Simply put, VIX actually looking like it just topped off here and heading in a downtrend is signifying that we basically need to be sell side the market. Well, if you need to be sell side the market, is in that being bearish the market? Well, not exactly. I've also in the description below linked down the options videos that I also linked on the weekend deep dive. You'll have the weekend deep dive, the option video down there. So make sure you guys check those out. I'll also have the option video posted at the end of this video so you guys can check it out as well. And if you guys like uh, some of this content, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button down below and have bell notifications on so you know when stuff like this happens. So when we give out free plays, you can take advantage of it. And if you want easier access to us, we also have the Discord link down in the description below. So you can check out, message us on Discord, interact with everyone. It's really, really fun. So make sure you guys check that. It only means a click for you and to gain massive amount of knowledge. But enough rambling about the VIX and about the Discord. Let's talk about the S&P. What is the strategy to employ for the S&P? Simply put, 580. If you close below 580, then these options you need to close. And if you're above 580 or coming anywhere close to it, load up on more and basically position size accordingly. So right, 5% maximum positioning per uh, symbol and then a, or underlying and then basically you're, you're golden, right? So let's jump over to the trade and see what we got. So I've already got pre-selected a couple options here for the S&P. I personally like to go out 46 days. That is where I like to find manage at 21, right? So that's 20 days of holding. Why is that important? Because then we'll go, we won't go past the election, right? We'll, we'll kind of close our position and manage it prior to Powell's craziness, prior to the Fed, prior to the election. So we have a higher degree of certainty and then implied volatility should crush them. I like to personally pick around the 25 Delta buying where I see pools of open interest. So I necessarily won't be like specifically Delta dependent, right? I won't go out to like 10 Delta, but a 25-20 split, five Delta split is pretty reasonable, especially if you even go out to like, let's say a 15 Delta. So you're looking at $200 profit, but $1,500 collateral. I personally like to do a, some of those bigger plays if the open interest is okay. But personally, seeing $100 for $600 risk, you know, you could double that to get similar profit to what we just mentioned. And it's easier to manage, right? And essentially looking at this, you got a pretty decent spread, about $10 wide, about five delta. So you're, you're sitting in an area that's not likely to hit, especially with VIX contraction because we have an implied volatility expansion recently that is gonna contract and thus we really don't care for much of that. Now let's jump over to the NASDAQ real quick and you guys can see the same exact mentality of how we can put this trade together. So again, uh, 46 days, I just simply come down on Tasty Trade. I'll have them linked in the description below with the referral code if you guys wanna check them out. But essentially, same thing, right? I'm looking for that 25 Delta area. Right here, I got $198 in um, open interest. 
or sorry, 198 contracts open interest. So I'm basically gonna sell at that 475 and then I'm gonna be looking, okay, I see uh, about, this is a $25 wide, but I'm, I don't wanna go that wide necessarily. So I'm gonna go down and buy the 465, right? $167 premium versus $833 collateral. I really don't see anything that I necessarily wanna move in this range. I wanna keep it about $10 wide, similar to the S&P, and this is a good starting point for the NASDAQ as we set up for greater profit opportunities. And simply put it, if the market decides to go the other way, we can close the position on the NASDAQ the same way we can close the position on the S&P for a slight or maybe not even a loss considering theta is your friend. Again, closing below 494.47, that would be bearish on the NASDAQ, on the S&P. And then subsequently with the bank earnings already occurring, you guys will know, is this rally gonna continue? Is the sentiment going to continue? Is the fear and greed gonna continue? So make sure you guys check out the option video to the left over here so you know exactly how to play this. I go through a back test system on Tasty Trade to show you that you can actually make 5% more than the standard market returns just by doing these options that only take about 10 minutes to do on a daily basis. You're not sitting in front of the screen, managing your portfolio like a crazy person. But if you guys want to know more, Discord, link in the description below. Make sure you guys follow us on X. And thank you again so much for watching. And I hope to see you in the live stream tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern.